But one stood up in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, honored by all the people. He said, leave them alone, for if this council or this work is of men, it will be overthrown. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow it, and you would be found even to be fighting against God. Acts 5, 34, 38 through 39. Dear God, thank you that you are more powerful than any force on earth. Even when people try to stop you, you can't be stopped. The message of your love can overcome anything and anyone. Please use today's story to help us understand how we can help others believe this wonderful message. Thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for praying with us today. The Kids Bible in a Year podcast is sponsored by Little Passports, delivering monthly activity kit subscriptions that help kids explore the world, cultivate curiosity, and discover new interests with hands-on crafts and activities in cooking, science, crafts, and more, all with a unique cultural twist. Visit littlepassports.com blessed to learn more and save 20% with code BLESSED. The Apostles Arrested In our last story, Ananias and Sapphira lied to the Holy Spirit and were stricken dead. In this story, the Apostles will be put into prison and an angel will release them. And although the Jewish leaders want them killed, Gamaliel will persuade them to leave them alone, as inspired by Acts. Hi there, it's Julianne Thompson, guest hosting for Julia Jeffress Sadler with the Kids Bible in Air podcast. I am so happy you're here. Today's story is about what happens when Jesus' disciples get arrested, but they keep telling people about Jesus anyway. Let's jump right in. Through the apostles, many people came to know Jesus, and many signs and miracles were performed among the people. This upset the Jewish leaders and made them jealous, so they arrested the apostles and put them in jail. During the night, an angel appeared to the apostles and released them, saying, Go, stand in the temple courts and tell the people all about this new life. In the morning, the apostles entered the temple courts and began to teach all the people. When the high priest arrived to the jail with some of the other officials, the apostles were nowhere to be found. The officer reported, We found the jail securely locked, with the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. The priest became greatly confused as to what had happened. Then someone came and said, Look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts teaching the people. The priest and the officers immediately went after the apostles and took them away. The apostles were then questioned by the leaders of Israel as to why they were being disobedient to the government. To this they responded, We must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. God exalted him to be his own right hand as Savior, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. This answer made the leaders very upset, and they wanted to kill the apostles. But a well-liked Pharisee named Gamaliel stood up, and asked to speak to the leaders away from the apostles. He said, Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. He continued by sharing examples of other revolts that died out after the leader had died, and then he ended saying, Leave these men alone, let them go, for if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail, but if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. At this, the leaders were persuaded, 
and after beating them, let the apostles go, believing that the name of Jesus would die. When released, the apostles praised God because they suffered for him. Day after day, they never stopped sharing the story of Jesus to anyone. When the number of followers grew, the apostles could no longer care for everyone, so they gathered everyone together and elected seven people to help care for the people as they continued to teach and pray. Everyone was happy with this decision, and the number of followers grew daily. More and more people are following Jesus. Isn't it wonderful? And the religious leaders can't do anything to stop it. They tried to close down the church, and it just kept getting bigger. They put the apostles in jail, and an angel let them out. No matter what those religious leaders did, God's people just couldn't be stopped. You'd think that they had seen that God was doing something extraordinary. But those religious leaders had the same problem that many people have today. They had turned off their maybe makers. What's a maybe maker? A maybe maker is the part of your brain that looks at new information and says, hmm, maybe what I thought before is wrong. Hmm, maybe I should consider these new ideas. Hmm, maybe God is doing something new that I didn't expect. Now, all of Jesus' followers had wonderfully healthy maybe makers. When they first met him, their maybe makers leaped into action. They turned Jesus' words over and over in their heads. Hmm, love my neighbor as myself? Hmm, stop pointing out what others do wrong and fix my own actions instead? And when their maybe makers said, hmm, maybe Jesus is right. God is doing something new that I didn't expect. Their hearts opened wide and God came right in. But the religious leaders weren't interested in maybes, not at all. In fact, they had shut the doors to their brains and locked them up tight with a thousand keys. They knew what they thought to be true and they absolutely positively were not going to consider anything else. Their maybe makers didn't stand a chance. Now, these religious leaders weren't necessarily bad men. They thought they were doing the right thing. From their perspective, Jesus and his teachings were dangerous, and so were his followers. That's why the leaders tried to get rid of them. But trying to do God's work without talking to God about it is never a good idea. Neither is refusing to let him talk back to you through your maybe maker. And all these religious leaders didn't seem to have any good ideas at all. Except Gamaliel. He didn't believe in Jesus or in what Jesus' followers said. But he was at least willing to turn on his maybe maker. Even if it was only for a little bit. And on the day Peter and the others stood in front of the religious leaders and the Jewish court, God used Gamaliel's maybe maker to save their lives. Gamaliel said, look, remember the other guys who said they were the Messiah? Thutis, Judas, eventually everybody realized they weren't and their followers just went away. If Jesus is not the Messiah, maybe the thing will happen to his followers. And because the new idea came from someone who looked like them and sounded like them, the religious leaders didn't have to turn on their own maybe makers, so they agreed. But if they had been willing to say, hmm, maybe I should listen to what Peter and John and those other guys are saying, their hearts would have opened wide and God would have come right in. Today, sadly, there are many people just like them. People who have turned off their maybe makers and shut the doors to their brains, locking them up tight with a thousand keys. They know what they think to be true, and they absolutely positively will not consider anything else. You'll never hear them say, hmm, maybe there really is a God, or hmm, maybe I should study the Bible before I say it isn't true, or Hmm, that's not the way I grew up doing it, but maybe I should give this a new way of doing things a chance. 
God might be doing something I didn't expect. But now that you know how important your Maybe Maker is, you can keep it turned on and help others open their eyes to see when God is doing something extraordinary. I am so happy you joined me today. Come back next time to hear how a special disciple named Stephen gave everything to follow Jesus. Remember, the Bible is the best story ever told. It's God's story to you, and it's all true. Did we add some sparkle to your day? Let us know with a review and guide more families to experience the same joy you felt. Thanks for listening to Pray.com Kids Bible in a Year. For more inspiring stories and wisdom to last a lifetime, download the Pray.com app for free today. Thanks for listening to Kids Bible in a Year. I want to invite our adult listeners to check out my other show, Unapologetic, God's Truth on Today's Topics. It's unfiltered, important, inspiring, and we have awesome conversations and amazing guests such as Candace Cameron Bray, Vice President Mike Pence, Dr. Robert Jeffress, Shannon Bream, Maddie Pruitt, and so many others. We are helping you have conversations that empower you to have bold faith in a broken world. You'll be excited, inspired, and encouraged in your faith as you check out Unapologetic. Remember that you can tune in wherever you get your podcasts and on Pray.com.